morning, good morning. Luke too. Have a seat, welcome. Merry Christmas. So glad that you're joining us here in person, live online, or maybe later online, I don't know when you're watching. But my name is Greg, and this Grinch over here is uh, Jordan. <laughs> Hey, Merry, good morning, Merry Greg. Christmas, Jordan. Yeah, good morning, man. Hey, so, yeah, I missed the assignment, clearly. They were out of Christmas suits at Men's Warehouse when I went. So, this is where we're at. You get Greg the Christmas guy and then me, but that's fine. Hey, uh, good morning, first of all. So excited to see you all here. It is so fun to have a packed house and be able to worship together with a full choir who absolutely brought the house down to start our morning. I want to direct your guys' attention real quick to one of these little guys. You can find them in the seats in front of you if you are here in person. If you are online, you can find them on the website. But these are our Connect cards. These are a great way for us to get to know you a little bit better and for you to get to know what's happening here at EFCC a little bit better. So if you're joining us for the first time this morning or maybe you've been here for a little while but you haven't filled out one of these guys for us, please do and then you can drop them in the drop boxes in the back or in the lobby. We would love to get to know you guys just a little bit better. Greg, what do you got for us? Absolutely. So... We like to have fun here. I don't know if you've noticed. I'm kind of a, well, I, like, I think I'm a fun guy. Um, so we decided to gather some students and some adults to make a video. And so we were just kind of thinking about how to do this and realized that, you know, each generation has their own slang terms. And so I looked up a couple. Um, so there's, hey there, daddy-o, to that is out of sight. If you think back to the 70s, the 80s, totally rad, dude and cool and awesome, and every generation has their own slang and their own lingo, so we thought it would be fun for some adults to read the Christmas story and the Gen Z lingo of today. And for those of you that might be like, whoa, that's a little out there, it sounds a little bit like you might be speaking tongues in public, don't worry, we have, we have the students reading the ESV version, so if you can turn your attention to the video on the screen. Luke 2, the birth of Jesus, according to Gen Z. About then, Caesar Salad decided he'd find a count of fams. <laughs> Big C never done did this before no cap. Each homie had to yeet back to the OG crib. Joseph said, I eat bet, and brought his baby's mama Mary too. Do, do you understand anything that I've said so far? Some things. Okay. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinus? Curionis. We're in it. I can't say that. This was the first registration when Quirinus was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each in this town, each to his own town. And Joseph went up from Galilee, which from the town to Nazareth, to Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because it was the house of the lineage of David. While they were chilling, it was time for Mary to have a little lamb. Out popped little Cap J. They made him toasty right quick and let him go night night in a barnyard grub hub because the pad was high key full. High key full, yes. Cap J must be Jesus, right? Probably. Capital J. <laughs> and while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Next door, there were some sheepy boys peeping the babas. Just then, an angel got to the place lit and had them shook. But the angel said, Whoa, my dudes, be shooketh not. I bring you that good good. The Cap C sent the world little J to save all the homies. And just so you know, there's no Cap. You'll find him wrapped all toasty in the barnyard grub hub. Just then, the whole sky got litty with a bunch of angels singing a bop. Okay. <laughs> and in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. 
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, and you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Stan, cap G in heaven, and on earth may we be chill with the homies. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. When the angels dipped, the sheepy boys said, We've been a peep little Jay. And they went and found Mary and Joseph with little Jay, and they knew what they had heard was no cap. What does that mean, no cap? They spit straight fire about what the angels told them, and Mary caught a vibe. <laughs> And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all, those, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. The sheepy boys dipped. What is dipped? The sheepy boys dipped, saying, They stand Cap G, because he hit, hits different. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. I feel like you've just said the exact same thing I've been saying. I don't know I don't, this, why you're repeating me so often. Listen, there were like three groups in here doing this before us, and they didn't understand any of it. That's crystal oh, clear to me, uh, this, right? Yeah, yeah. No we, problems. we don't need a different. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Longing. 
existence of his government and peace, there will be no end.
Wow, what a fantastic job. Great, great job, you all. Awesome job. Jordan, did you know there was a backside of this page with announcements that we were supposed to share? Truthfully, I totally forgot we were supposed to do announcements yeah, at so, all today. So we should uh, share some announcements for you all this morning. Um, first of all, it's Christmas week. So that means Christmas Eve it will be later this week, specifically Friday, because that's when Christmas Eve is. Yeah. So we will be having a Christmas Eve gathering in here in the sanctuary. Join us for a condensed gathering which will, in which we will prepare our hearts to celebrate the greatest gift mankind has ever received, Jesus. There Amen. will be no kids um, class during that gathering because we want the kids to join us for Christmas Eve that night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Yes. start time for Christmas Eve gathering. Hey, you guys might have noticed the boxes on the way in around our beautiful Christmas tree, but we are running a clothing drive through the month of December. So that's going all the way until December 26th is the cutoff date for that. If you guys want to bring any kids clothes, you can find the list of what we need either next to the boxes on little flyers, or you can actually find it on the website. Um, but you can drop it off here in the lobby in those boxes, or also in the office if you want to bring some kids clothing by. Yes, yeah, speaking of giving, year-end giving is happening right now. So as 2021 is coming to a close, you might be considering a year-end gift. Um, if you are planning on giving in 2021, please remember December 31st is the last day of the year, and therefore the last day that it can be counted towards 2021. Um, so it's the last day for contributions. That includes donations. They have to be postmarked by December 31st or dropped off in our office by December 31st. If you have any questions, you can go to our webpage at ufcchico.org under the giving tab, or you can call Rick, extension 207. That's, that's him. Last but not least, with the holiday coming up next week, I want to let you guys know uh, some changes in the office hours. The office is going to be closed starting Wednesday, December 22nd, and it will reopen on Monday, January 3rd. So if you have any reason that you got to get into the office and do anything in there, please make sure you do so before Wednesday of this coming week. Otherwise, uh, we will not be there. So <laughs> with that being said, would you please stand with us as we continue in worship this morning? Uh, it was great to see the, the little ones and uh, just enjoy them. It was fun to see the youth saying some weird stuff. Thank you for that. <laughs> and um, this is just a real cool opportunity for us to join together with an age-old song that I think many of us love. And uh, we're going to be led by the organ on this. So let's sing it out with all our hearts this morning. Yeah. 
is a fun morning. It is great to uh, be with you. If we have not met, my name is Kenny. Welcome to our family Christmas gathering. Hey, if you are online, thank you for tuning in as well. Uh, also, if you could do me a favor, we've got some folks still standing kind of in the back. If you don't mind moving to the aisle, just scooting over just a hair, if you don't mind, that would be helpful for us. Some of our hospitality friends could help you find a seat if you are in the back looking for one. So please, uh, at any moment when you're ready, you can move to a seat that is open. Um, it doesn't bother me at all. All. So please uh, do that again. Gosh, it's fun to have a packed house uh, this morning. Choir was great. You look great. I saw a lot of red and Christmas colors in the house. Unfortunately, we don't look as good as Greg, <laughs> but we're all working towards something. Okay? Man, kids were great. Uh, did such an awesome job singing to Jesus. I loved that. And then I fully expect that each and every single one of us will memorize the Gen Z version of the Christmas story. Uh, man, no, today is our third week in the Advent series. If you can see off to my right, we have been lighting candles. And today is the third candle. And our topic is love. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can open those to John chapter 3. That's where we're going to be hanging out. But before we get there, I need to kind of lay some concrete down on the ground for us so we can build on top of that together. I need to start by helping us understand this truth. Number one, love starts with God. Unfortunately, there is a lot of counterfeit love out there, and let's be real, completely real. Often, we mindlessly use the word love. When I was in high school, uh, super mature, there was this girl that I really liked, and I knew that she was starting to enjoy the company of another dude. And so with, I mean, effortlessly, I was like, I love you. <laughs> I will never forget what she said to me, which was amazing. Not at the time, but she said, do not say that word to me ever, ever again. That is for your wife, future wife only. I was like, I was stunned, but obviously, as I'm sure you're aware, I did not understand the meaning of love, but I don't think we often do. We just kind of throw around that word like it just has this meaning that's not so significant. I mean, I love tacos, or I love vacation, or what about just hitting the heart button, that option on a text message or your social post or that tweet that your friend just sent out. In many ways, love is now a universal term for nothing in particular, which makes conversations about it really difficult. Instead of bending towards culture's meanings of love, we must look to something bigger than ourselves. This something is actually someone. According to the Bible, love starts with God, never with us. Picture this. Before the creation of the world, no people, no places, no things, but there is love. God is himself love. Love isn't God, but God is love. Real love has its origin and its essence in God. John 17 um, has this kind of scene that plays out where there's this exchange between Jesus and God the Father. Uh, you may know this as the high priestly prayer. According to Jesus, 
The Father loves the Son and the Spirit, and the Son loves the Father and the Spirit, and the Spirit loves the Father and the Son, all of this before the creation of the world. Without this, we would not know what love is because love would have never existed. The foundation of love is found in the triune God. Love does not exist because of our dictionaries, definitions, or hashtags. It exists because it's who God is. If we want to understand love, know love, and give love, then we need to work from God as our foundation. That's our concrete that we must build from this morning. Love starts with God. From the scriptures, though, what else do we know about love? Today's text, John 3, 16, um, I'm going to read through the first part of 18. It says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. God doesn't hog love. He doesn't keep it to himself. He doesn't um, just say, "Ah, it's on this island called the triune God. No, he blasts it out to the world. Love gave himself to the world. While love's origins are in God, it doesn't just stay with him or he keeps it. No, he blasts that out to each and every one of us. Did you know that God loves you? God loves you full stop. No qualifications, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. God loves you. He delights in you. He wants to be your father. His affection is in no way, hear this, his affection is in no way conditioned by your lovability. He loves you because of who he is. Because he is love, God sends Jesus, a baby in a manger, who would one day rescue the world from sin and death. Jesus, the Savior of the world, the one born on Christmas Day. As the story of Scripture continued through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see that God's love is entwined with substitutionary sacrifice. We find this connection in the death and resurrection of Jesus. See, the cross is the proof of the Son's sacrifice. Whereas the empty tomb is proof of the Father's acceptance of that sacrifice. Both together display God's love for you and for me. Friends, we're all looking for love. I was looking for it in high school. Deep down, we all need it in ways we don't understand or even acknowledge. We search and search and we find glimpses, moments, tastes, and samples of love. We have genuine experiences of love, and yet nothing quite gets us outside of our own hurts, our own self-interest, or our own sin. We need the realest love there is. The love, this love is only found in Jesus John 15, verse 13 says this, Jesus said this, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Sacrificial love is the ultimate love. The one who is love himself sacrificed himself for our good. The eternal loving fellowship of the divine community, the Trinity, sent out one of their own to die, not just for friends, but for enemies. Why would this loving fellowship do this? To make enemies friends. 
of course. In Jesus, we can know true love. This is one of our applications this morning. Know true love. If you're here today and you do not know true love, I invite you to know true love today. The Sunday before Christmas, you could say yes to Jesus. It's simple. Tell God that you love him. Thank him for Jesus. Thank him for Jesus' love that, that now you can be forgiven for your sin. God is inviting you this morning to know true love. And you might be sitting in your seats right now, or you might be online right now thinking, no, Kenny, I got to clean myself up. I got to clean myself up before I can approach God. No, you don't. God wants to be in relationship with you now, and he sent his son Jesus to absorb all of your sin, all of your shame, all of your mess. He sent Jesus to absorb that on the cross so that you can be God's friend. You're no longer an enemy in Jesus. Instead, you are a friend. And that, is that because you're awesome? No. It's because Jesus is awesome. It's because Jesus is better. It's because Jesus is the best. It's because Jesus came for our eternal good. If you do know true love, if God is your Savior and Lord, then I invite you this Christmas season to go deeper. Meditate daily on this true love. Friends, we have been rescued from much, forgiven for everything, and saved unto infinitely more, infinitely more than we deserve. This is great news. Marinate in this reality. Just sit in it and watch it change you from the inside out. I love what C.S. Lewis says. He says, the Christian does not think God will love us because we are good, but that God will make us good because he loves us. Just as the roof of a sun house does not attract the sun because it is bright, but becomes bright because the sun shines on it. We have been rescued from much, forgiven for everything, and saved unto infinitely more than we deserve. We have become bright because of the sun's light. Lastly, trust true love. In life, God gives us the right restrictions. It's his character. True love has concern for his creation. God wants to see humanity thrive and flourish. He knows it's only possible when we live in tune with who we were built for. Now again, does that mean, Kenny, I got to get everything right and then I can come to God? No. But once you are uh, saved and rescued, then it is a gift to walk with God. It's a gift to live with right restrictions that he gave us. I'm telling you, one of the hardest and most difficult thing as an American, as a person, I'll, I'll, I've got this. We have that, that attitude of I've got this is not helpful when walking with Jesus because it's not true. It's a lie. You actually don't got this. We actually need God in this life. We actually need his spirit to indwell in us so that we can begin to live like he's called us to live. And that all comes, does that come from you showing up to church and checking off your you know, Christian checklist? No. It comes from Jesus and Jesus alone. And so if you've invited Jesus into your life, what you have essentially said is, God, like, I'm, I'm, I'm walking with you now. 
Now, all of us, though, if we're honest, we go, dang, we mess that up quite often. So what do I do? It's this great thing. One, you were forgiven for past sin, present sin, and future sin in Jesus. That is amazing news because I'm telling you right now, I'm going to walk out this door and I'm, yeah, I'm going to sin. Dang it. But because my past, present, and future sin is forgiven, when I walk with God, I remember that and go, oh, I'm headed in the wrong direction. I'm not living within the right restrictions that God's given me. So what do I do? I sin's over here. I turn, repent, I repent, I turn, and walk with God. And you know what's amazing about that is that God's already forgiven that sin. Unfortunately, the evil one, he wants to lie to you and say, oh yeah, you are a bad dude. Like, you're not righteous in God. That's not true. He wants to condemn condemn you and give you guilt. And so even now, even now, if I'm telling you, Kenny, man, during the Christmas season, I haven't really been trusting true love. In Jesus, it's okay. It's okay. That's good news. It's good news for you. Why? Because today, you can begin to trust true love like you never have before. You can grow in trusting true love. Colossians 1.16, one of my favorite verses in the scripture says this, For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him, for him. You and I were built by God for God. With this reality, it is our gift as creation to look to our creator and embrace his instruction. It's our gift to trust true love. Oftentimes, we don't though. Instead of trusting true love, we lean on our own understanding We might not ever say this out loud, but I think we can lean in directions of I'm better, I'm smarter, I know more. And those are the things that we need to repent of. I know I've done that. Unfortunately, I'm guessing more than often that we're willing to admit we direct our attention towards lesser things. This is not the way forward, and I invite you this morning to grow in trusting true love. As the band comes back up, I'd like to conclude by saying this. Friends, love starts with God. If you don't know him, I invite you to know him today. Sunday, December 19th, you can say yes to Jesus. You can say yes to him before you go and party and have an awesome Christmas with hopefully tons of family and friends. You can say yes to Jesus because God is inviting you this morning to know him. Don't make it complicated. Say yes to God. If you do know him, I invite you to grow in your understanding of him. And lastly, I challenge you to trust true love with all of your life. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are our hope. I thank you that we can have joy because of the hope that is in you. Thank you that your love for us has given us a hope now, but also a hope in the future of when you return and set up your kingdom in all of its entirety. This Advent, we're grateful for all that you've done for us. We're grateful for all that you are 
God. Thank you for inviting us into relationship. Thank you for sending your son so that we might be saved. If there are any friends in this gathering or online today who have not said yes to you, I, I, I just pray, God, that they would say yes to you this day. That, Lord, whatever hurdles or barriers are keeping them from you, you would knock those down. And that all they would see is your arms wide open. For those of us who do know you and do love you, God, even now, compel us to follow you in ways that we are not. God, I pray that you keep us from the evil one who wants to throw lies and condemn and put guilt on us. Protect us from him, but show us, God, how we can walk with you in greater ways, knowing that we have been forgiven for the things that we're not doing correctly even now. Thank you for your love in your name. Amen. Before you leave, uh, Larry's going to share a little something with us.
Yeah, go ahead and have a seat just for a minute. Um, Stone family, can you guys come up? And also, uh, pastors and elders, why don't you make your way up here as well? Um, as you know, this has been a, a great season. God has really blessed us with the Stone family. And uh, they're... They're going to be heading out on a new adventure as a family as we are heading out on a new adventure as a church. And uh, we just wanted to pray for you guys. And, uh, you know, it's been a good ride. Yeah. A, a short it, ride. It, it, it's, but a good one. Yeah. I, you know, I, I know Kimberly wants to say something as well, but I just wanted to, again, just thank you. We love this church. We love you very much. And you guys have such a great leadership team here. There is great things ahead for this church, and I'm so, we, we're going to continue to pray for you, and I'm so excited to see what God is going to continue to do in you and through you, and uh, I personally, personally, my wife and my kids have been blessed by you, and we love you very much, and so thank you for being, I'll use one of those 80s words, awesome, thank you. Yeet. Yeet, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just wanted to extend thank you from our kids, myself, and Kenny. Thank you for inviting us into this family and letting us be a part of this special church. I want to exhort you that this is a special community, and God has his hand on you, and he has good things in store for you, and you will be in our hearts, and you will be in our prayers, and our greatest prayer is that you will see unexpected blessing and God's um, richness in this new season for you. But from the bottom of all of our hearts, we thank you. Thank you so much for letting us be a part of something so special. Parker, Ellery, do you have anything to say? I want to say goodbye to the whole church and thanks for all your support. <laughs> you should have seen uh, Ellery and Parker help out on the packing of the truck. They were uh, great helps. They, uh, they really were. Well, it's been a, long, been a ride, a short season. But you know, you guys have found your way into our hearts. We love you. We're going to miss you, but we know that God has good things for you guys, just as we know that God has good things for us. Amen. And we're excited about the future. You know, it seems like whenever one chapter closes, another chapter opens, mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to hearing about the new chapter for you, as well as we're looking forward to seeing the new chapter for us. Amen. So let's pray. Um, just pray with us together. God, you have blessed us so, so much with Kenny and Kimberly and Parker and Ellery. What a gift you've given us. They are truly special to you. And Lord, we just pray for them as they take off on this new chapter of their lives, this new adventure. We pray just for safe travel in the next couple of days as they head north. But also we just pray that you'd continue to guide them in their future. We also will look forward to how you're going to be guiding us as a church. You have blessed us so much just with a loving church family and strong staff and leaders. God, your hand is upon us as well. And we just want to acknowledge that. And we just want to say that we trust you because you truly are the source of our love. And you have loved us greatly. We just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Feel free to share your blessings with the Stone family out in the lobby as we leave. Okay. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm.